Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Jordan Ari, and today we have Cody with me, my baby daddy, and we're filming <laughs> our pregnancy, labor delivery, postpartum Q&A. You all asked questions on Instagram and we are answering them. Well, I'm answering them, he's interviewing me, and I'm sure he'll have his input on things as well, because he always does. Um, make sure you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and tap that bell notification so that you are notified whenever I upload future videos. So we have the questions, they're broken down into three different sections. So there are pregnancy and birth prep, labor and delivery, and then everything about baby girl, postpartum, and then just some reflective, reflection questions. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. What made you do a home birth instead of going to the hospital? I decided to have a home birth because I didn't have insurance. If you don't know, it costs around $30,000 to have a baby in the hospital, and I was not about to pay that out of pocket. Late, late in 2021, I had heard about this midwife, and so I wanted to explore other options. I was exploring birthing centers. I was just trying to figure out how can I get the cost down to something that's affordable for me to pay out of pocket. What's crazy is the deadline for insurance was like January 14th. And on that day, I was like, I should take a pregnancy test. I don't think I'm pregnant, but I should just take a test because if I don't get insurance and I'm about to have a baby, that's gonna be crazy. And lo and behold, two weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. I did not take that pregnancy test that day. I should have, because I probably would have tested positive because I was already like five or six weeks when I found out I was pregnant. So I probably would have tested positive and I would have got insurance and I probably would have never had a home birth. But everything happens the way it's supposed to because I'm so grateful that I had the experience that I had and I did not go through with the hospital setting. How did you find a midwife and doula for your home birth? And actually in October 2021, which is crazy, literally a full year, because um, I had baby girl October 2022, I, Cody's sister sent me this midwife and she was just showing me the videos. We were just talking about it. She was like, Jordan, if you ever get, if you ever have a baby, you got to work with her. Like you got to have a home birth. You got to do this. Like, and so I was looking at it. I was like, dang, like that's, that's crazy. I was always scared of having a baby. I was scared of labor. But somehow when I saw it, I was like, dang, like I really want to work with her. And so whenever I found out I was pregnant, I, it's, like I said, I, I had a meeting with the Atlanta Birth Center and I talked to them and it was just, they had so many rules and stipulations. It was like, Cody could only come to two of my appointments and I was going to still have to go there to have the baby. I was going to meet with a bunch of different midwives. I wouldn't know who would actually be with me on the day I delivered. And I, all of those things were just like, okay, I guess, but we'll, we'll, let's keep exploring our options. The Atlanta Birth Center, I think, was around $13,000 out of pocket. So that was still very expensive. So I went to go find midwife Angelina, who is who I ended up working with, who is who his sister had sent me. And we got on a Zoom call. I remember the first thing she asked me was, I was eating a Krispy Kreme donut. She was like, what's your diet? And I was like, Oh, this woman about to have me in check and that's what I needed. Like she made me feel really safe and comfortable. She was literally going down the list of credentials, like all the things she's done. And I'm like, damn, like, okay, she like really knows what she's doing. And I had already seen all her videos and stuff on Instagram. So I was like, I instantly just wanted to work with her. She just has this like vibe to her that makes you just feel like good. So yeah, I was able to have my appointments at home. I was able to know who was gonna be with me on the day of my delivery. And she had a team of other people who she worked with. So I selected the doula that she works hand in hand with. And it worked out so perfectly because just little things like the day I went into labor, well, when she came and checked me, she was able to just call her and be like, hey, get over here. It was just really good. Um, what's the word? Chemistry. Yes. It was good chemistry between them. It just worked out perfectly. And then the doula, she was a cancer and I love cancer energy. I'm a cancer. So it just was perfect. So tell us about your journey and how you, how you prepare for pregnancy. Pregnancy, preparing for pregnancy was really interesting because at the beginning, I, our baby was a surprise. I did manifest her. Cause at the end of 2021, I kept saying, I think I want a baby. I think I want a baby. And then I was drinking Tyler's womb wellness tea. I'm, almost positive got me pregnant 
Whenever I first found out I was pregnant, I was excited, but I was nervous. I was terrified to give birth. Like I've always been the child who was like, I don't know if I want kids. Like I was scared to literally push a human out of me. And so in order to prepare, I really watched a lot of YouTube. Bridget Tyler has a lot of really good tips for preparing for pregnancy. What do you think helped you prepare most for delivery? When I was in labor, the biggest thing for me was my breath work and was staying in a positive mindset. And I will say throughout my pregnancy, I increasingly became more confident in my ability to give birth. And I think it's because I had a team who was making me feel confident. Every time I had an appointment with the midwife, it was always at least an hour long. My midwife and doula would bring things up to me so that I was educated and that, that really helped prepare me for birth. Um, so definitely meditation because I was in my head the entire time I was giving labor and I'm a person who lives in my head, but it's important that I have the right things going through my head. So I had a meditation playlist that I would listen to throughout my pregnancy. I'll drop it below because it was amazing. I was literally like reciting some of those chants as I was like laboring. So when you watch the labor video, it's completely silent because I'm in my head like, in a piece like literally singing the songs i also watched um a lot of natural home birth videos so just like you may have seen mine if you haven't already i'll link it right here but i watched a lot of them because seeing other women give birth and seeing that they could do it i was like dang like i really can do this and i'm a pusher too like one thing about me when i want to do something i'm gonna do it i'm gonna push through it what advice would you give a mom as she goes into labor? The breathing techniques were so key. Being able to like inhale for six seconds or for four seconds, exhale for six and just relaxing your body. That pushed me through every single contraction. Like I was, every time I had one, I was just, and just blow all the way, making sure my face was relaxed, my eyebrows, my jaw, my shoulders my hands and i remember as contractions got more intense it didn't feel like i was relaxing even though i was still doing those breathing things it's because my body was literally doing the opposite of what i was trying to get it to do but just keep going even when you feel like you can't relax yeah i can agree i feel like the breathing was the biggest part of mm -hmm. you getting through it yeah cody didn't think i was even struggling so yeah i didn't think you were struggling at all did you have any complications as far as low iron, positive GBS, preeclampsia? So I fortunately did not have any complications uh, when it comes to any of those things during my pregnancy. I will say my midwife did alert me that my iron was not considered low, but it was right on the border between regular and low. And so she told me to get some liquid iron. It's amazing. So I'll link that below as well, but I did not take it. It wasn't until I gave birth, I did lose a lot of blood. Whenever I got back into the bed and stuff, she was telling me like my iron was low, we needed to pump me with iron. So I ended up taking the iron supplement that I could have taken during my pregnancy, um, but I took it afterwards. And my midwife was like, all right, so if we do this again, you need to be on iron. So my iron wasn't critically low, but I, I lost a lot of blood. So that definitely affected me in the postpartum period. Did you take any birthing classes beforehand? Yes, I took um, a birthing class with Prepare Pregnancy, I think it's called. I'll drop it down below. It was all online, so that was great. Let's talk about how you handled pregnancy with your growing, fastly growing business. I decided that I was gonna just stop the business. Not really stop the business, but like slow all the way down. I wanted to focus on just being in a healthy state for my pregnancy. I was already unsure about how I was feeling going into the pregnancy. So I just wanted to make sure that I was taking care of myself. So I decided to prioritize myself and my baby over my business. And that's been the common trend for me ever since finding out I was pregnant, just taking it really easy. Um, I know someone also asked about how long I took for maternity leave. Right. So I found out I was pregnant the first week of February. Um, I was pregnant all year, all of January. So I found out I was pregnant first week and I decided to stop working or take it really easy because my first trimester I was 
I was pretty sick. I wasn't critically sick, but I was pretty sick. And I knew I would be having her in October. So I was like, well, the end of the year, I'll take October, November, December, give myself three months and figure I'll go back to work in January. So it pretty much gave me the full year to just slow down and stop. I wanted to see what I was gonna be feeling like. I'm one, most, one month postpartum right now and I'm really eager to get back to work. So I'll be back in January. So I just think it depends on how you feel as a mom um, or, or as you're carrying life because some women are pregnant and they can just keep going. My first trimester, like I was tapped out. I had a couple clients and I, did, I closed my books. I didn't even allow myself to get booked again. Um, beyond what I already had set up because I just couldn't take it and then by second trimester I was ha I had some more energy but every time I went to a shoot it was like eh, I'd rather be at home like I'd rather be laying down I'd rather be relaxing and by third trimester I was not doing a damn thing so it just depends on how you are feeling in your body now we're gonna push into the uh, labor and delivery questions okay perfect um, so the first labor and delivery question is how long was labor and how did how long did you actually push so I say labor was 24 hours. I went into, I woke up from contractions at 12.30ish a.m. on Friday morning. Yeah, Friday morning, Friday, Thursday night, Friday morning, 12.30 a.m. And I had her, pushed her out at 12.05 Saturday morning, 12.05 a.m. Saturday morning, Friday night. So to me, I say 24 hours. Um, but the contractions really hit the fan 6 p.m. on Friday. So I would say like six hours, wait, six, is that six, six, hours? six hours of uh, actual like active labor where it was turned up intense, crazy. And then I think I pushed for around 30 minutes. Pushing was, whew. pushing was hard. I think I pushed for about 30 minutes. Mm, it'd be like an hour. I pushed for like an hour, maybe. Yeah, we okay. got in the pool at 10. And we was kind of back and forth for like an hour. Yeah, and I she remember- She didn't really start telling you to push until- Yeah, cause I remember she asked me like, yeah. do you feel like you have to poop? And I was like, I feel like it's coming. Yeah, you sat in the pool for about an hour. And yeah. Then... And then she started asking me questions about like my need to push. I think in my head, I was like, expecting to feel like this crazy urge to poop. I never got that crazy urge. And I will say when I was in labor, I literally pooped all day. So I had like nothing in me by the time I went to um, went to go push to give birth. So I don't know if that affected it or what, but I never had like a super crazy urge to push. I did feel pressure, but it wasn't like those moms who were like, no, I got to push right now. Like I got to, I got to get it out of me. I never had that crazy sensation. What would you say the pain was on a scale from one to 10? Labor, contractions, and pushing. One to 10, contractions. I feel like at the beginning, they're like three, two, three, you know, uncomfortable cramps. When Cody was asking me um, how I felt about feeling the contractions, they were probably about five, six. They were more annoying at that point. So I was like eating the ice and they were just like annoying. I just wanted them to go away, but it wasn't unbearable. I would say they really got like to like a nine, a nine. I don't think they got to it. I don't know. It's still crazy. Cause it's like hard for me really to remember what it felt like. Right. <laughs> uh, I'll probably say they hit like unbearable around seven o'clock and that was probably like nine ten but i was still managing so it's hard for so me to say been that bad yeah it's hard for me to say a can't 10. remember now what the yeah. pain was well no mom can remember Pretty what the much. pain was but i say if i was still managing i still kept going at when it when i felt like i couldn't go anymore i feel like it was at least like eight nine you know it was definitely painful i would remember not unbearable though I remember I was like going through the contraction, I had my head, arm above my head, I was like this, shaking my knee, and I would go like this, trying to relax, and then I would have to bring my arm back up, and I was just trying to breathe through it. I feel like that had to be a 10, because I was sick of that shit at that point, like I was over it. I feel like that had to be a 10, but I mean, I kept going for it, that was at like 9 o'clock, and I still went for another 3 hours, so 
I mean, right. I feel like, and I feel like the pushing for me was worse than the contractions. I think it's because she was so big. Like she was eight pounds, 11 ounces. I wasn't expecting to be pushing out a baby that big. I thought my baby was gonna be like seven pounds. So, mm. a six, you know, six, seven. I was seven pounds, one ounce. I'm thinking my baby was gonna be a little smaller. No, she was, she was chunky. So I think that had an effect on pushing being terrible. I was crying. Protein. Yeah, I was crying between pushes. So like pushes. the protein made a big, uh, big difference. Yeah, my midwife wanted me to get 80 grams of protein a day, and I was not missing no meals. I was trying to get all the protein I could. I started getting these Core Power protein drinks, which were so good. Um, was drinking those. They had like 40 grams of protein, so I was getting hella protein, especially towards the end. I would personally definitely recommend those. Yeah, um, we got the moms chocolate ones. Who don't, um, who can't eat as much mm -hmm. while they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, especially at the beginning of like we want to do it. Still need again. the protein. Um, yeah, especially they would have been great at the beginning of the pregnancy because right. I couldn't really eat. I don't know if they would have made me sick, but they definitely would have been worth a try. Yeah. What helped your journey through contractions and pushing? So I did talk about this earlier, but the breathing and the meditation that I previously did really helped me journey through contractions. I mean, I did do a lot of movement and that was helpful. My body naturally just wanted to move. From the moment I woke up with contractions, I naturally just wanted to move around using the birthing ball. Oh, when the contractions got intense, the counter pressure in the hip squeezes, Oh my gosh, I don't think I could have kept going without them. And I think that's why I feel like the pain decreased as well is because when you were like, I remember you had your hand on my back mm -hmm. and you moved it slightly. I was like, no, Cody, put it back. I'm like, do not move your hand from that spot because it made all the difference. So dads or moms, whoever you have supporting you while you are in labor, I don't care if you need to get the nurse in the hospital to do it, them hip squeezes, or that counter pressure on that back. Oh my gosh, it just, it saved the day. Did it hurt as bad as you thought it would? <laughs> I, the entire time I was pregnant, well, towards the end, I started saying that I couldn't wait to feel like, feel a contraction, because I wanted to know if I could tolerate the pain. And I'm gonna say, it hurt as bad as I thought it could, but it was definitely tolerable. <laughs> you could definitely do it. I could do it again. It's crazy because I never wanted kids. I was always scared of labor and delivery and I want to do it again. So what was that actually like doing a water birth and um, were you nervous about it? Yeah, I went into it nervous, but, and I was still nervous. Even though I was confident that I could do it, I was still nervous. I remember being in the pool just thinking, oh my gosh, you probably got about 20 more contractions and this baby is going to be out of you. You can do it. I was feeling a little scared. I was feeling like, am I gonna be able to push this baby out of me? I was nervous, definitely. But I'm like, you didn't come this far to just come this far. Like, right. you are gonna push this baby out of you. You really don't have no choice because this baby gotta get out of you. So yeah, I was definitely nervous, but I knew that I could do it. So would you recommend having a home birth to others? And would you do it again? Definitely would do it again and I would recommend it to other women. I think there are so many negative depictions of childbirth, labor, delivery. Women are screaming. When we watched House of Dragons, the woman was getting cut open. I couldn't even watch that because I didn't even wanna see that to be able to manifest that in any way in my pregnancy journey. So I just, I just think that there's so much negative around it. So there's a lot of room to be afraid and it doesn't have to be that way. And you are able to have a beautiful, serene experience giving birth that encourages you to even want to do it again. And, and really encourages you to be able to step into your power and to birth the way you want to birth, no matter what that, mean, what that looks like for you. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend other women do it this way but I more so recommend that other women become educated about the birthing process so that you understand what options you have and you just know, you know, you know, your, your rights, like, you know, what's available to you and you can make the decisions for yourself 
versus giving all of the power to someone else. I would, uh, personally, I would recommend home births to all people, all females that can that can have home births um, that mm -hmm. are healthy. Mm -hmm. The body allows them to. Yeah, and but I would say check um, check your local state. We're located in Georgia, so oh, yeah. it is legal to have a home birth in Georgia. It's not actual. Uh, it's not legal in every state, so yeah. definitely check your uh, your state's laws and regulations mm -hmm. around home births. Next question: Did you tear? I did tear. I and I know a lot of people are always afraid of tearing. I didn't have any thoughts around tearing. And one of the books that I read, the give you didn't book, want to. I mean, I didn't want to. Who wants to tear? <laughs> Who wants saying, to tear? I know. I'm not saying you wanted <laughs> to, but at the beginning, it was like a question you asked everybody. Did you tear? Did you tear? Did you tear? It seemed like you was really concerned about it. Yeah. Was did it? Yeah. I don't. I don't remember that. You but was. I mean, my memory is real foggy these you days. Was. But everybody that had a baby. You asked, did you tear? Did you tear? Did you tear? <laughs> Look, just like they asked me, right. did you tear? Right. So I did tear. Um, I think towards the end, I wasn't as concerned about tearing because of something that I read, read and give birth without fear. And basically, it's just like your body is going to do what it needs to do. Like your body isn't going to tear in a way that isn't that it can't return from. And yes, I tore. And I went naturally, I felt it all, but I didn't feel a tear. Hell, my body is busting wide open, wider than it's ever open before. So it's you're gonna feel stretching regardless. So personally, I didn't have anything else to compare it to. So I mean, we'll see if I tear next time, but like, I mean, I couldn't feel myself tearing. I got the stitches, I do, I do have a high pain tolerance. I, I learned that from, you know, my experience with the contractions and when I got stitched up, like I had to get, um, what was the, the shot of numbing stuff, whatever. Yeah. That didn't bother me. It was no big deal. I didn't feel her sewing me up. It was all good. Um, so how did you push this eight pound, 11 ounce baby out? It was crazy as fuck. I had a really hard time pushing her out um i had to get coached through i remember i was pushing and she's like you need to push with a deeper tone like I, my moans were too i guess high pitch you need to use like a really like mm, like, almost. like yeah and you really have to like push like you are pooping and it was hard for me Cause she's like when at first they were telling me to push and they and they did teach me how to push prior to but i in that moment you're not thinking about that like so i'm like she's like you need to she's told me something about how i needed to push and i'm like i don't know how and so i had to get coached through pushing it was really hard she was big her head rocked back rocked out and then came back in and then rocked out and came back and i'm like i can't do this anymore it was it was it was a lot it was a lot. <laughs> I was crying in between pushes. I was sweating. I was holding on to Cody for dear life. I'm like, you better not move. <laughs> I wanted him to catch the baby. It didn't even work out that way because I was like, no, you are you are holding me up right now. He was trying to like, he was uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> but it was cool. Yeah. Um, last labor and delivery question. Did you keep the placenta? My placenta is in my freezer because I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. But as of yesterday, I decided I would get her encapsulated because they said it has a lot of benefits for like postpartum, healing. I probably should have just got it encapsulated right away. Maybe I'd be healing faster, which I'm, I'm healing just fine. But like maybe it would have been a little faster. Um, they say it can help with like the hair loss and my hair is so full right now. I definitely want to keep all my hair and all my edges. So I'm gonna just go ahead and get her encapsulated. I need to text um, Jimmy see if the, my doula does encapsulation. So if you need someone in Atlanta, she's gonna be linked below too. But now we're gonna move into the baby postpartum and reflection questions. Um, first question is, how did you come up with her name? <laughs> so I was scrolling on a website and I saw the name Oakland, O-A-K-L-A-N-D. I went to middle school in an area called Oakland so instantly it stuck out to me and I was like, all right, I just added it to the list. And it was the one that really grew on me because at first we didn't know the gender. So I wanted gender neutral names 
And I was like, okay, I can see Oakland for a boy or a girl. So I was like, okay, I like that. And then I was on TikTok and I saw a baby girl. Her name was Oakland. I'm like, oh, so cute. O-A-K-L-Y-N-N. -N. And so that's how I came up with the spelling, except I did L-Y-N. So one in, not two. So yeah, that's how we kind of came up with that name. It was really just a name on the list and then it just became the name that we liked the most. Uh, I really felt connected <clears throat> to like the meaning of like the oak trees, like they represent strength and power and I really liked that. Um, and then her middle name is Soleil and I really wanted the name to be Soul if it was a boy, but Cody didn't like Soul. So it got pushed off the list but then here i was on tiktok again and i saw a baby her name was jordan soleil and it was spelled jordan j-o-r-d-y-n so i was like oh, in the soleil it was like the feminine version of soul and i was like i already wanted it to be soul soul means sun and so does soleil and i was like i love the sun i love sunsets I love sunrises. I just think sun is God's light. She is the light of my life. It just, it just worked. And Oakland Soleil flowed flo perfectly together. So we got Oakland Soleil. Mm -hmm. and it was good because it was, well, Oakland was gender neutral. Yeah. Depending on how we spelled it. Yeah. So boy or girl, we both. I mean, it was Oakland across the board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we just changed the middle name. So. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy he liked Soleil versus like Soul. I would, I could have named her first name Soleil, but it just didn't happen like that. I mean. Sometimes I think maybe we can just call her Soleil. We'll see. We're, we're still trying to figure out nicknames for her. So we'll see what sticks, especially twin. as she's growing. She gets his twin. <laughs> so he just be calling her twin. I don't look like I got nothing to do with her, but it's okay. So what were your first thoughts when the baby arrived? All I could think was, oh my God, I did it. I did it. I did it. Like literally, I could not believe that I pushed that baby out of me. Like I could not believe I, me, me, this girl right here had a child. So it was just like, oh my God, I did it. Like, wow, that is crazy. I did this. I created this. I created her. Wow, and she don't look nothing like me. I didn't think that, but <laughs> um, yeah. And I remember my midwife was like, hold on. She's like, you can hold her. Like I was just, in, I was in shock. My midwife says to Oakland, like, are you in shock? I was, I don't know if Oakland was in shock, but I was in shock. Like I just could not believe it. I know there's this episode of Game of Thrones where Daenerys Targaryen, at the, season one of Game of Thrones, she gives birth to like a dragon-like creature. So in my head, I kept being like, what if, it's not even a real human inside of me. What if it's something else? <laughs> like, it. I mean, I knew I was a human, <laughs> but like... Stop it. In my head, Stop. I just could not wrap my head around the fact that there was a human life growing in me. So I just, I was just really in shock when I saw her. So a lot of people are asking, did she get your hazel eyes? Uh, babies, their eyes don't develop until like <laughs> year three. And that's when you can really see what color their eyes are going to be. Um, her eyes are still developing. They're still really dark. I can't really see much. My mom thinks she sees gray on the outside. Cody thought he saw blue the other day. The other day I was like, ah, I think her eyes are just brown. So we're still trying to figure out what color they're going to be right now. There's, there's no way we can really tell. So how does it feel to be a new mommy? It feels good. And how are you doing mentally? It feels good. Um, week one, I just looked at her and cried a lot. I just will be like, Cody, I just love her so much. <laughs> just such an emotional wreck. Like, I didn't get it. My friend Carlene cries all the time about her baby. She cried about my baby. She cries about everything now. And I'm like, girl, when did you become so emotional? And now I get it because literally the whole first week, I just would look at her and just cry like, I love you so much. I just wanted to hold her. She's right here. So I'm like looking at her like, I just mm -hmm. love you so much. Um, yeah. It feels good to be a new mom. My mom was here the first three weeks helping. And so I've been on my own, not on my own, but like with we've been without her for a week and a half. And I will say it got a little more intense. Cody, we have our restaurant, Mr. Diddy's, shameless plug. If you're in Atlanta, come to Mr. Diddy's. Um, 
but Cody is there all day Friday and Saturday. So like when I say all day, I mean like he leaves the house around like 9.30, he gets home around 8.30. So I'm pretty much with her all day. That, was, that only happened this past weekend, Friday and Saturday. That was rough. Friday almost took me out. She was so gassy. I couldn't figure out like how to get the gas out of her. My milk was, it was something I ate. So it was like process of elimination. That part was kind of rough. Um, but I mean, it was really only Friday. Saturday we went and hung out at the restaurant for a little bit just to get some time out the house. So Saturday was a lot better. But that was like my one challenge day so far in this one month postpartum journey. Um, I will say Cody's such a great help though because Sunday, day off mom went to go have some self-care time got my nails done my feet done got a massage my baby daddy sponsored me so that was nice he was <laughs> able to stay with her for the day and i was able to get some time to relax so i think it's just been good having like that balance and making and, and having the support of cody because I, I was scared when my mom left i was scared i was scared but everything has been doing has been going well is there anything you learned through the entire process? I would say like, I really learned to trust myself and like my body. And I really learned how to slow down. That was just a personal lesson for me. I am a person who is always on go, like nonstop, go, 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 go. Cause I was obsessed with my job. And this year I had to really let go of that obsession for work and just focus on myself because little did I know a new obsession was going to come and take over. And so while caring for Oakland is not like caring or, or, or working and being a workaholic, the feeling is a little similar in terms of like, I would go nonstop for work, burn myself out, be tired as hell and keep going. And I do that same thing now for my child. Like, so being, Learning to slow down and to be able to allow myself to take breaks was really important for me this year so that I had the energy to pour into my baby. And also so that I could learn to like allow others to help me. So like making sure I allow Cody to support me to take care of our child and not be one of those moms who's like, no, you gotta do it like this or not feel like, oh, I don't trust him caring for her on his own because that wouldn't give me any of the space that I need to still be me and to get the um, the energy refresh that I'll need sometimes. So last question is, um, throughout the whole process, did you do anything differently? I don't think I would. I think I'm like proud of the way that I did this. Uh, I will say like I was, kind of hard on myself about working out throughout my journey. Um, but I would just say like, I wish I would get, would have given myself a little bit more grace and spent more time just like enjoying being pregnant because I was like so over it the entire time. Would you say the working out helped? Yeah, I think it did help. It gave me like that stamina to keep going, but yeah, I don't know if I would do anything differently. I think one thing I forgot to mention in terms of things that helped me get through is I had a list of positive affirmations on sticky notes on my mirror that I looked at every day with recite to myself and those kind of helped me get through as I was um, going through my pregnancy just because initially it was so hard for me to wrap my head around the whole thing. That's it. That's, That's it. all the questions. That's all the questions. Shout out to Cody for joining me in that <laughs> video because Cody is He's a shy person. I wouldn't say shy. I'm just shy around laid back, chill, relaxed. Yeah, shy Not around people guy. sometimes, very reserved. Behind so, the scenes. Yeah. Shout out to you for joining my video. <laughs> okay. This is his first time ever, so hopefully we can get him to do more videos with me. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content like this from me. And we'll see you next time.